Praise the Lord, everybody. Bless the Can Lord. we open our mics and just a praise unto the Lord? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Are we happy to be in the in you? Praise the Lord. I'm not hearing any response. Are we happy to be in youth service tonight? Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I am happy to be here and I give God thanks. He is just so wonderful and faithful. Tonight we will be looking at a very interesting topic. We're going to be looking at overcoming peer pressure. Um, but before I start, let me greet um, first our pastor, uh, Pastor Romana Ellis, and I greet all the officers and saints of God who are in the service tonight. And if, if there are any visitors with us, I greet you. Welcome. And I pray that this service will be a blessing to you. Praise the Lord. So tonight we're talking about overcoming prayer pressure. Before I continue, are you able to hear me clearly? Amen. Hearing you clearly, sis. Perfect. Perfect. Amazing. All right. So, all right. Can the host allow me to share screen, please? Okay. Okay, I can. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Praise God. All right. So, while this comes up um, tonight, or, or so I have something to share with us tonight from the word of the Lord. But before I proceed, I want us to have a little discussion um, about the topic of peer pressure. So we're going to be having an open discussion um, before I go into the word. Let me just share. All right, so this is our, this is Bethel Portmore Youth Roundtable Talk. So, well, virtual roundtable talk because we're, we're, we're having our service virtually. But as I said, it, it will take on the form of an open discussion. And I really want to encourage us to share our thoughts um, on the topic. Feel free to share. Um, uh, a little bit about me, I am um, a young person, I think probably a, one of the older young persons, but I'm 28 years old and I think that I have probably been through some of the experiences that you might be experiencing as young persons. Um, and I think that through, discussion, through this discussion, um, you may be able to learn something from me as well as I would love to learn something from you all. So feel free to open up and, and, and share. So tonight we're talking about overcoming, overcoming peer pressure. Um, but before we go into the topic, what is this thing of peer pressure? And is this a young people issue or is this an everybody issue? What is peer pressure? What do you understand from that term, peer pressure? Anybody do, don't, don't leave me hanging. Anybody want to share? Come on, guys, come on. Somebody say when your friends push you to do something. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? That's a very good, that's a very good um, understanding. It's very good. Come on, young people, man. Come on. This is a this is a young people topic. Or something that we 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 an issue that we are faced with. All right. So somebody wanted to say something. Oh man. Um, I think peer pressure is a good or bad influence your peers have on you. Beautiful, beautiful, very good. Who was that? Sorry, I'm not seeing who is speaking. You want to say your name so I can address you by your name? Courtney and Charter. Courtney. Courtney. Very good, Courtney. Courtney. Very good. Very good. And as Sister Althea Wright posted in the chat, when friends influence their decision, 
more than likely to do something wrong. And it's a very good understanding. So we're starting off on a good footing. So, and as Courtney and said, peer pressure can be good and peer pressure can be bad. Very good. So um, I'm going to share an experience with you and you can tell me whether you think it is peer pressure. So when I finished, um, you know, finished primary school and do G start and was ready to start high school, you know, in the summer, your parents would do the, the back to school shopping and all of that. So, you know, they allowed me to choose which school bag I wanted. And, you know, that was a, that was a, a big thing. You know, I got to choose my school bag and my pencil case. And I remember at that time, like, John Sport was the hype bag for me. Like, I was finally going to own my own John Sport. And so I chose a John Sport bag and was ready to start high school. You know, enter high school confidence. They have my John Sport bag. And I felt so good. When I started school in September, um, I realized that there were some girls um, who were probably you could have called them the hype girls or the hot girls or, you know, girls of who were of a particular status. They were carrying this bag um, with a monkey hanging from it. I don't know if anybody, anybody ever hear about Kipling bag? You can type in the chat if you ever hear about Kipling bag. So they were carrying Kipling bags. And when I saw the bag, I thought the bag was ugly. I didn't think, I didn't think, Abigail, I did not think that Kipling bags were cute. I thought that, and I was like, why are these girls carrying these bags with a monkey hanging from it? This is not cute. And I felt good with my dance sport bag. Anyways, um, as time passed and I realized more and more persons were getting Kipling bags and, you know, all the, the hype girls were wearing their Kipling bags and all of a sudden I just started to like Kipling bags. You know, I, 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 I started to want it and started to desire it. Like, you know, me want, me want hype to me want, you know, I wanted to, to, to have that too. And so um, I started to think that my John sport just, it just start look plain to me and it not cute, it not have no monkey, it not have, it just one plain black bag. You know, the same dance sport that I was so excited about. Anyways, um, when January came around now for, because, you know, um, for the new school term, you know, I said to my parents that, you know, I want to change my bag. You know, I really ready to change my bag. And of course, they were puzzled because they're thinking that this dance, it's fine. It's OK. You can go back to school with it. And I'm, I was so troubled. I'm like, no, you know, I want a new bag. And then I'm asking well, which bag I want. And I was saying, you know, I want the Kipling bag. And then, of course, when they checked out the price, it was so expensive. And it was, it just didn't make sense to get a new bag, you know. And um, of course, I had to go back to school January with my dance sports. And I had no choice but to be content with my dance sports. But I just want to ask you guys, do you think that that was peer pressure? What do you think about that? I don't really think that's peer pressure, in my opinion, because like they didn't come up to you and like address you. I just saw them. So that's more of a ready eye. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good point. That's a very good point. <laughs> all right, so all right, what I want to bring out where I would differ from you is that the thing about peer pressure is that it can be a direct thing or it can be an indirect thing. So peer pressure doesn't always take the form of someone coming up to you and giving you a cigarette and say, use this cigarette. You know, it, it, it's not always, it doesn't always come in that form. Sometimes it can just be the influence of the actions of others around you that influences you. And so um, that would be indirect peer pressure, but it is peer pressure nonetheless. Understand? Make sense? Yeah. Make sense? So you keep the same answer, you're still changing the answer and saying that just ready. Eye. <laughs> no, it's peer pressure. <laughs> Okay, who was that? Sorry, who was that speaking? Sister Anna. Sister Anna, okay, Sister Anna. Thank you so much. All right, so I'll, I'll ask you guys, what are some things that 
You're muted. You're muted, Sister Brady. Sister Brady, you can't hear me? You're muted. Hold on. Okay, you're on mute now. Sorry, I was muted. Sorry about that. So I was asking, what are some things that young people are pressured into doing? Drugs. Cheating exams. Somebody said drinking. Drugs. Drugs or drugs, yes. Smoking. Smoking. Getting a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Those are good answers. Those are good answers. Anybody else? <laughs> Somebody said dumb TikTok challenges, stealing. Yes, I was just gonna ask about um stealing social media. Oh my, I, I you guys are hitting the nail on the head, right? So these are some of the the, the, the pressures and influences that 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 we find around as young people and not only as young people but just everybody in general my that great challenge i don't that is certainly something that boy it's it's just unfortunate but yes these you're right crazy it's crazy so these are these are some of the things that that young people are pressured into doing um i'll ask is there anyone that has had um any experience with this issue of peer pressure and would like to share their experience anybody nobody had a peer pressure issue Perhaps the experience would be more direct than, than what I had said. All right, if nobody has any experience, perhaps you will, you can think of one but at the end of the presentation, but that's okay. Um, what I would ask, all right, what makes young people give into peer pressure? Why do you think young people give into peer pressure? We're talking about negative peer pressure now. Because they don't, want to be the odd one. they don't want to be the odd Acceptance. one. For ac yes, yes, they don't want to be rejected. They don't want to be the odd one. They want to fit in somebody's says Yes, guilt. Being peer pressured into bullying. Right, so right. So being peer pressured into bullying is 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 another form of peer pressure that, that young people face. Right. Fear, right. And the last time um we spoke about um overcoming fear, want to be a part of the popular group. What about not wanting to lose friends? What about that? Or not wanting to hurt your friends' feelings. Um that's another reason wanting attention, poor self-esteem. These are very good reasons, very good reasons why um, young persons, um, I feel free to open a mic and say them too. Remember, we're discussing, um, but these are very, very, very good reasons. Um, what about um, young people just not knowing themselves, who they are and who they are in God? Fear of abandonment, yes, yes. Yes, very important. 
Right, right, right. Bless God. Um, very good, very good. Thank you everybody for participating. Very good. My last question though, and I would really love if, lack of confidence, very good. I would really love if the, if the um, parents on the line could, could respond. Um, for parents, um, what do you do as parents to kind of shield your children or your young people from the negative influences? What can parents do? Or what do you do as a parent? Hi, good night, Samantha. How are you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Who is speaking? Geraldine. Oh, welcome, Geraldine. Go ahead. Hi, welcome. Um, I can't speak as it relates to, you know, um, I'm a child being pressured, but I think as parents, um, nowadays parents, I think what we have to do is to first show our children love. Love is very important. And because sometimes they do not get that from home, whether in, in, in just their parents hugging them, whether it's their parents saying it to them, um, they go out into the environment and try to fit in. And because of the you know, not getting the attention from home or the love, they probably get it from their peers, but the, the love that the peers are showing is so that they can do wrong. So as parents, I feel it's important for us to teach our children, boys and girls alike, to value yourself, you know, to, to, um, to not feel any way when, you know, you're not going with the crowd because everybody is unique in their own way. Everybody is special. So these are some of the the, the things that we have to remind our children or our child each day when they go out into school, when they go out into university, you know, even at church, you have peer pressure, you know, in terms of, you know, wanting, you know, the church, I'm, I believe, wanting you to get married because of, you know, certain things that people probably want to be engaged in. So I think overall peer pressure is in the workplace as well. It's in your house. It's in your family you know so it's it's not just looking at kids being peer pressured it's we as adults sometimes are pressured to do things not that we want to do but because we we see other persons doing it with their children or their their lives we, we are pressured to do certain things just to be in the you know mrs jones and so such so parents we just have to teach them love teach them respect teach them self-worth you know basic stuff as hygiene and just basic stuff is a way to to help your child so when they reach out into that environment they know that what my parents my mother my father pray with me every day they tell me every day you know that they love me of affirmation they hug me you know a lot of persons feel like because we are grown man we're not free, you know we're not supposed to um hug them or tell them so we love of them but sometimes that is one of the the problems that happens why men also try to do things because they don't receive it at home so as parents we just feel like we just need to you know we're not saying to be our children's best friend but at the same time you have to make sure that you're instilling certain things and you're also affirming it to them you're beautiful you're wonderfully made you know you can speak to us stuff like that would not cause peer pressure and I mean, if you get it from that angle and, and I mean, they still go out there and do things. We as parents, we try, we try, we pray. We have the whole family, I pray, we fast, we do everything. But the honest truth is if we are doing just the foundation of, of being there, showing up, telling them that we love them and, and, and really showing it in our actions, then I feel like the peer pressure will not be one of those dominant things in society. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Geraldine, for... for for your your important nugget nuggets very good um very very good any other parents want to share how we can shield our young people especially our young people growing up in the church how do you shield um your young people from from the negative influences Well, it's sister Charmaine here saying that teach them to <laughs> teach them to satisfy with what they have and don't compare themselves with others. That's a very good lesson. A lesson that I had to learn, Sister Charmaine. 
Yes. Sister Muir, as parents, it's important to listen to your child or children and really listen. Don't take it for granted to investigate the matter. Sometimes they're trying to tell us something important. Don't push them away. Yes, it's really important that our children feel and know that they are being heard. Great, and Sister Charmin said that your child should also be your best friend. Thank you so much for these um, important thoughts. And I really um, hope that we have a better grasp of the issue. Um, I want to share with us a little bit from the word that concludes our virtual roundtable talk. Thank you for participating, everybody who gave their input. And I really hope that, that we've learned something. So so as was highlighted, that as young people and people generally, not only young people, but everybody, um, influence come from many different angles or pressure come from many different angles. We get pressured from our friends, we're influenced by our family, the media, and as was also pointed out, social media. And we're going to dive in a bit more about social media later down. Amen. You're still with me? Amen. Yes, we are. <laughs> Great. Great. Good. It's good to, to hear some feedback. All right. So we're going to, I, I, I want to share with us about how to overcome negative peer pressure, right? Because peer pressure is not always a bad thing. Um, sometimes we, we, we do have um, good influence and um, which impacts us well. And so I want to speak to us about how to overcome negative peer pressure. Um, I'm, I want to use two persons from the Bible. First, we're going to look at Caleb and I'll speak a little bit more about the other person after. So we're going to look at Caleb and our focus will be Numbers chapter 13 and 14. So the text was read earlier. And so we see Numbers chapter 13 that God, God gave instructions to, to Moses to send some spies and send some men to search out the land of Canaan. And we know that we, we for those who may not know, um, Canaan was a promised land. It was the land that was promised to the children of Israel. But before they went in to possess the land, um, God gave instructions that men were supposed to go up and spy out and see what was happening there. And so when God gave Moses the instruction, Moses instructed 12 spies and he sent them out to go and to explore the land. Praise God. Two of the 12 spies that were sent were Caleb and Joshua. I want us to remember that 12 were sent and two of the 12 were Caleb and Joshua, right? And so the men went up, the 12 of them went to search out the land of Canaan. And when they, they, they spied out the land, they came back to Moses and the other people of Israel with a report, right, of what was happening. 10 of the spies came back with an evil or a bad report. They said that there were a lot of giants in the land. They insisted that the land was populated with great giants. And so they said that, you know, we're not able to go in and conquer this land because of how the giants are. And they said to Moses and the, the rest of the people that when, when they compared themselves to the giants in the land, they felt like grasshoppers. They felt small and insignificant to these giants in the land. And, and so they didn't believe that it would, it would have been wise to go over and conquer because they're saying, you know, these giants, they're gonna crush us because we are, we are just these small little grasshopper men. We are just these small people and we are these big giant people. And so, you know, let's not go over and conquer. But two of the spies, so that was 
the report of 10 of the spies, but two of the other spies, who were Joshua and Caleb, they had a different report, right? They said to Moses and the people of Israel, Caleb in particular said, let us go up at once and possess the land for we are well able to overcome it, right? Joshua and Caleb said that the land is a good land. And they said that the Lord, the Lord God who is with us, our God, he is able to give us the land. And so even though there are these giants in the land, our God is with us and our God is well able and we are well able to overcome it. So fear not, let's go over and possess the land, right? And so, and so when the people heard these two reports, the report of the 10, and then know the report of the two, Joshua and Caleb, they, 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 they believe the report of the 10 spies. I mean, these are 10 compared to Joshua and Caleb, just two. And so when they heard this bad report of how the giants are in the land of Canaan, they wept. The Bible said that they wept a lot. They cry whole night. They're so, they're so terrified and filled with fear and, and, and just so overcome that they cried. And they not only cry whole night, they protest against Moses and Aaron, right? They're saying that the, Moses, Moses, Moses don't know what he's doing. Let's choose another leader because Moses is going to cause us to, to, to die. So let's just choose somebody else, right? And not only that, they, they, they went and they wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb. The only two persons who said, look here, let us go up and possess this land. They wanted to stone them, right? They set out to stone Joshua and Caleb. Now, when God saw what was happening, right? The Lord responded and the Lord said, you know what? Not one of these people will ever enter the land because of how much they, they doubted the God that was with them. Imagine these were the people of God, right? And, and, and Joshua and Caleb are saying, don't look at the, the, the size of the people. We have our God with us. Let us go over and possess the land. And they, they, they didn't believe that. And so God said, look here, not one of these people will ever enter the land. But of course, the Lord said that Joshua and Caleb, Joshua and Caleb would be able to, to, to possess this land. Um, and the Lord said about Caleb that, you know, Caleb in particular would be able to go over and possess because he had a different spirit within him, right? The Bible says that Caleb followed the Lord with his whole heart. And so the Bible, the, the, the Lord made a promise to Caleb and say, you, you will enter the land and your descendants will also enter the land because he believed the Lord. And in addition, what happened, the 10 spies who brought the evil report of the land, they died from a plague. They died. But Joshua and Caleb, the two in the minority, they lived. God spared them. God spared them from the plague. And so from this, this, from this, this scenario, this incident, I think that there's much that we can learn about how we can overcome negative peer pressure. And one of the first points of overcoming negative peer pressure that I would love to drive home to us is that as young people and people of God, we have to understand the assignment, understand the assignment. I don't know if for those who keep up a bit with social media, and I'm talking to young persons, you probably hear the term, understand the assignment. For example, when um, Elaine Thompson and, and Shelly and, and the, the Jamaicans when they dominated the Olympics, a lot of people were saying on social media that they understood the assignment. Everybody ever hear that phrase? They can type in the chat if you've heard the phrase. But I just want to say to us that Caleb understood the, the, the assignment. He understood the purpose. He said that let us go up and possess it. He knew 
the God that he served, he, he understood the assignment that was on his life. And so if we understand who we are in God, you won't be, we won't be easily influenced. If we understand the purpose of God in our lives, then uh, the negative influences, we won't be easily drawn away by it, right? So because we're children of God, although there are these influences around and pressures, right? We will not, we will not be led away by things that do not align with our assignment and do not align with our purpose in God. And so when, when, when you return to school as young people, whether you're going to high school, primary school, prep school, university, wherever, when you go to school, you know, understand that you are there for a purpose. And, 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 and when you, you, you have that understanding, you will not partake in things that don't align with this purpose. Praise God. Amen. Anybody agree? Amen. 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 So we will, Amen. We, will say, we will say no. We will say no to things that do not align with the purpose of God in our lives. Praise God. And so that brings me to the other point. How do we overcome negative influence? As people of God, as young people, we have to say no. We just have to say no with the help of God. There are some things that we are just going to have to say no to. I don't know if you're seeing the slide, but, you know, there are these smoking, alcohol, theft, all of these things. They're going to come. But, you know, it's a no for me. No, I'm just going to have to say no. These things do not help the purpose in my life. It doesn't help me to fulfill my assignment, then it's a no for me. Praise God. Praise God. And the other point about how we can overcome negative peer pressure as young people and people of God is that we have to be careful of, of our peers. And our peers mean um, the, our friends, our acquaintances. We have to be careful about who, who we, we have around us and who influence us, right? Um, with the, 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 in the, the story of Caleb and Joshua, Caleb had Joshua and Joshua had Caleb and both of them did not influence each other negatively into following the majority. You know, Caleb never said to Joshua, all right, since, since then, people say, we can't go up there. We could just say what the other thing saying. You know, they, they didn't influence each other that way, even when they were being stoned, right? Caleb had a Joshua, and Joshua had a Caleb, right? And the Bible said that Caleb was of a different spirit. What kind of friends do we have as young people? What kind of spirit do our friends have? Are, are our friends liars? Are they thieves? Do they influence us to be promiscuous? Do they skip school? You know, what kind of spirit do our friends have? That's very important. We have to take a stop sometimes and look at the people that we have close to us and who we call friends. What kind of people are they? And I want to tell us and, and just encourage us as young people that it really helps. It helps to have saved friends. It helps to have friends who are in the church and not only in the church, but take church seriously, take, take them Christianity and take the purpose of God seriously. It helps. And I just want to give just a little, a, a little testimony. You know, when I, when I was in university, one of the things that helped me a lot was, was UCAM, the universities and colleges apostolic ministry. And I really encourage this is, this is something that I think saved my life. I really encourage for those who are on campus, get connected to, get connected to a UCAM. Um, this is the, 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 uh, the apostolic ministry on campus to, 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 to provide support for you to grow spiritually as, a, as an apostolic Christian. You want to be connected to these people on campus and, you know, and, and just build up your network of saved, saved friends and, I can tell you it has it really helped me like helped me deeply um 
when I was, there was one year that I even boarded on campus. And so I was living on campus for a little while and I was on campus for five years because my course of study was five years. But when I, when I got connected to UCAM and in my last two years of university, it was, it was just the best decision ever. These were people who were engaged in the work of God and people who, who can help you to grow, right? And so a lot of the, 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 the influences that were around on campus, on the university campus, I was not drawn by it because I was so busy with UCAM. Um, so, I mean, even I remember there's this party that I don't think they would have it now because of COVID, but there's this, even this party that they keep on campus called integration on a Thursday. And I mean, it never appealed to me because UCAM was on a Thursday. So it, you know, it just, it, it never, it, it really helped with just staying, staying grounded. And I remember when I, so when I finished university and, you know, I moved and I started working and um, I was on my own. So there was no you come around and all of that. <laughs> I was on my own and you know I started to to, to see an old friend, right? I, I started to like an old friend again and you know I started to get weak and you know I was hanging out here and there with this friend, this guy friend, and he was not saved. And I really started, I really started to get weak. And I remember it reached a point where I, I felt like I, I, I just couldn't manage because I just couldn't get him out of my mind. I guess people that said probably fall in love with this unsafe. Can I imagine falling in love with this unsafe guy? And I remember it was one evening, man, I took up the phone and I called a friend that I had met in Newcom and I explained the situation to her and she prayed for me. She prayed for me on that phone. And it's like, it's like she prayed the like out of me. <laughs> it was... It, it, I think I experienced such a deliverance on that phone call, but it was, you know, it was because, I, you know, I met her through, through UCAM, and I mean, I'm just saying that to say, to build up a network of saved friends, have saved friends, it really will help you, because I don't know, maybe if I had friends who validated me liking this guy, and I mean, he was a handsome guy, and, but he wasn't saved and perhaps they would have said, you know, something that's not wrong with that, not wrong with that, you know. <laughs> perhaps they would, have, they, they would justify me and validate me. But, you know, there was this one person who could say, look here, no, you know, no, and pray for me. And it really, it really saved my life, I believe. So I just want to encourage us to really be careful of our peers and, and, and have that voice, that wise voice in our, in our lives. And another point that we really need to understand too is in, in overcoming negative peer pressure is that majority opinion is not an accurate measurement of right and wrong. Sometimes you're just gonna have to be in the minority. You're gonna have to be in the minority and just understand that that's okay that is okay, right? There are, there are so many examples where majority persons were saying one thing, but that's not an indication that it was the correct thing. I mean, even, even the story with Caleb and Joshua, 10 out of 12 spies, that's 83% of the persons that were sent to the land of Canaan, they were wrong. The Bible said that they brought back a wrong report. And the persons who were right, they were in the minority, but they stuck to what they believed and stuck to their conviction and their understanding of the God who they served. And I have here also, look at Noah. Look at Noah. Everybody was, was, was mocking him, not believe, uh, didn't believe that destruction was going to come. And they mocked him. He was in the minority, but he continued. He continued and so just understand that when it's not a bad thing it's actually a very good thing sometimes when you are when you are the minority voice you know and the thing also is that what I've learned through life is that you know over time too people will come to sometimes they, they, they really come to respect you that you stick to your convictions 
Praise God. And so I want to encourage us. We don't have to follow the crowd. We don't have to follow the crowd. Let the word of God be what influences our life and our decisions and our actions. And it's very, it's, it's very important that we cultivate these principles from youth, from our young, from now, to understand that following the crowd is not necessarily the best thing. And so just be okay with being that only voice in the wilderness. You will be okay. God is with you. God is with you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The other point about overcoming negative peer pressure is that we really have to, and this is not only for young people, but for everybody, is that we have to beware and be careful of the influence of social media in our lives. There are so many platforms now, so many. You have the TikTok, you have the Twitter, you have the Facebook, the Snapchat, you have all these challenges. You know, you're, you're seeing people's lives and pictures and all of these things. Um, videos nowadays, everybody's doing a YouTube video. We have to be careful of how these things influence us as people of God. And the thing about it too, with social media is that a lot of persons, they measure themselves by, by, by social media. They measure, they measure their sense of worth by how much likes or how much persons subscribe. And these things can be very dangerous, right? We can lose our, our, our sense, we can lose ourselves. We can lose our sense of worth and our value in God when we start to, to measure ourselves by these things. And so it's important that we, for those who, who use it, because it's there, I don't think we can, you know, I, I, I don't think we can just ignore the fact that it is there. And so for those who use those platforms, it's good as Christians to take breaks from it. Take breaks, right? Don't spend an exorbitant amount of time scrolling and liking and commenting. And that's all, you know, the life becomes, right? Because we'll find ourselves being, being pressured by what we see online. And, and sometimes what, what, what's there online is not even reality. And so we always have to measure ourselves by the word of God and not, not measure ourselves by what we see on social media. And, you know, it's, 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 it's a very important point. And I really would pray that we really get it because too, too many persons are, are just falling prey to this. Um, it was just, um, it was just up some months ago. I don't know for those who use Instagram, um, Instagram has a feature now where you can turn off the amount of likes that you see. So if, if like 10,000 persons like a picture, no, you don't have to see that 10,000 persons like it, right? They don't have to see the amount. And what actually motivated Instagram to do this was because there was a concern that persons, too many persons were being pressured on social media by all these likes. And so Instagram said to decrease the pressure, they're gonna put in this feature. But it's, it just goes to show, it just goes to show the influence that these things have in our lives. And so we have to, we have to be careful of it. Praise God, praise God. And so the final point, the final point about overcoming negative peer pressure that I want to share with us is that we have to remember and we have to see the promise and know that there, there is a reward. And I would love any young person to just, op you can open your mic and just read the verse. It's on your screen. It's from Joshua chapter, chapter 14, but it is on your screen. And this is Caleb speaking. Anybody? Bless the Lord. Now, as you can see, the Lord has kept me alive and well, and he promised for all these 45 years since Moses has, since Moses made this promise, even while Israel wandered in the wilderness. 
Today, I am 85 years old. I am as strong now as I was when Moses sent me on that journey. And I can still travel and fight as well as I could then. Amen. Wait, don't, don't go as yet. Hold on, I have one. I want to continue reading. Continue reading. So Caleb's still speaking. Okay. So give me the hill country that the Lord promised me. You will remember that as Scots, we found the descendants of Anak living there in great walled towns. But if the Lord is with me, I will drive them out of the land, just as the Lord said. So Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephune, and gave Hebron to him as his portion of land. Hebron still belongs to the descendants of Caleb, son of Jephune, the Kenizzite, because he wholeheartedly followed the Lord, the God of Israel. Praise God. Thank you so much. Praise God Almighty. So the Bible says that Caleb, Caleb received his reward. He received the country of Hebron because, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly right he he even though he said that even though there were giants in the land he followed the lord right and he was not he was not daunted and so because of that experience Caleb is saying give me Hebron and the bible says that to this day Hebron still belongs to descendants of Caleb right he received his reward and so the same goes for us. There's a promise. There is a reward that's promised to us as people of God when we hold on to God and are not led away by the influences of this world. Right? There's a promise and there's a reward for us. And so just like Caleb, let's hold on to that. And, and, and one day, one great and triumphant day, we will receive our reward. Praise God Almighty, but we will have to follow the Lord God Almighty wholeheartedly, right? We can't, have, it's, 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 if Caleb had followed the crowd, he would have missed out on this promise, right? But the Bible said that because he followed the Lord wholeheartedly, he was able to receive of this promise. So I, I really encourage us to, to hold on to that. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so I had said that we would look at, at another person. And this other person is, is Rehoboam. Rehoboam. We're going to look at his story and see what we can glean from this. And so Rehoboam was the son of, of Solomon, um, one of the kings of Israel. And um, his story is found in 1 Kings chapter 12. right? And just a little background. Um, of the story. What happened is that so Rehoboam was to be crowned king of Israel. And so he went to Shechem to be made king. And all the people of Israel were present to, to make Rehoboam king. Right? And so when they made him king, the people said to Rehoboam, okay, Rehoboam, your father Solomon, when he was king, he put a heavy burden on us, a heavy load on us. I, like it was hard for us. But now we are asking you, Rehoboam, as king now, if you could lighten this heavy load, lighten this harsh load on us. And if you do that for us, we will be committed to you and we will serve you. And to me, that sounds like a fair request. That sounds like a fair request, right? And so Rehoboam said to the people, Check me back in three days. Let me consider it. Let me run it over for three days. So you can come back in three days and I'll tell you what I decide. So Rehoboam goes and Rehoboam consults with the elders, right? So when he goes and he consults with elders, these elders were the same elders that served Solomon. And remember that Solomon was his father who was also king. And he says to the elders, Elders, how would you advise that I answer these people? What should I say, say to them? And the elders said to Rehoboam, 
if you, if you will serve the people, if you will be kind to them, if you will have a servant's heart towards the people, they will be loyal to you and they will serve you, right? And that sounds like very good advice. You serve the people, the people serve you. You know, very good advice, very good way to run a kingdom. Sounds reasonable, sounds wise. That was the advice of the elders. We'll see how Rehoboam treated with, with the advice. The Bible says in 1 Kings 12, verse 8, that Rehoboam forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him. So Rehoboam rejected the advice of the elders, and he went and him consulted with the young people. Oh, elders, we hear what the young people have to say, right? And the young men said to, said to Rehoboam, tell the people that you're going to make them burn heavier. Whip them, be hard on them, be harsh to them. That's why you must tell the people. And Rehoboam, so the people came back to Rehoboam and said, what have you decided? What have you decided? What is the outcome of our request? And the Bible says that, verse 13, and the king answered the people roughly. Rehoboam answered the people harsh and forsook the counsel, forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him and spake to them after the counsel of the young men saying, my father made your yoke heavy and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. My God, my God, right? So Rehoboam, Rehoboam completely rejected the wise counsel of these elders, right? The elders gave him very good advice, right? And he goes, and he, 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 he just totally rejected it and went with what his peers said, right? That's how his peers influenced him. And he just gave in and he went and he answered the people that way. And something terrible happened because of this, right? The Bible says that when the people, when the Israelites heard Rehoboam's response, the kingdom split. They could cause the kingdom to split 10 of the tribes rejected Rehoboam as king, rejected his kingship, and only two accepted him. And not only that, Rehoboam, Rehoboam almost died. They almost killed him. The Bible said that he narrowly escaped in his chariot. He nearly died. And so um, just on the point of good influence versus, versus bad influence, right? it's very important that we we as young people and, and people of God value good influences in our lives and have people who influence us in a good way. Praise God. Um, or else we, are, we will suffer consequences. We see it with the people of, of, of we see it back with the, with, with the story of Joshua and Caleb and we see it now with Rehoboam. We, we, we suffer consequences if we give in the negative peer pressure and, and, and negative influences around us. First consequence here is that you, you will lose your identity. You, will, you, you can lose your identity as a child of God. You start to feel bad about yourself. All of a sudden, you know, you not good enough. God not good enough for you. Um, you just, you know, everything else just seems better. Everything around just seems better. You have, there's no uniqueness about you. And it can even get so serious that you start to behave like others, like other people. You lose your, 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 your value in God. And so you start to take on your identity of, of, of other things in the world, of worldly things. And that can be very, very serious for us. That can lead to death. We can die spiritually if we succumb to the negative influences around us, right? The Bible says that Rehoboam narrowly escaped death. I mean, some of us may not be so fortunate 
to narrowly escape. We, we, we can die spiritually if we just give in. We can suffer much loss. The same thing with the people of Israel. God said to them that not one of them, gonna, they were disinherited. Not one of them are going to enter. Right? They lost it right? because, they, because of the, the, the bad report of these persons. And even the 10 spies who brought these, this bad report, they died. And so it's really an example, an example to us. We are complete. The Bible says that we are complete in him. We are complete in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are complete in him. We don't have to take our cues from the world. Jesus is enough. Praise God Almighty. Hallelujah. And so I just want to leave this last verse with us and pray that we'll, we'll remember it for those who are going off to school, starting this new school term. I just want to read this verse to you from Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. It says that he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so it's in, in comments on us as people of God that we associate ourselves with persons who are wise, who, who, who align, who help us to align with the purpose of God in our lives, right? Who make good decisions for those who are, who are studying, align yourself with persons who are disciplined, right? If you align yourself with people who are waste time, you go waste time, you go waste your parents' money, right? You, you, you want to associate with persons who will help you to grow, praise God, right? The Bible says that, why, if you reject this and you go hang out with fools, you're gonna be destroyed. It's gonna, it's gonna destroy you. It's gonna destroy you as a Christian. It's gonna destroy you as a student. It's, 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 it's not gonna fear well for you. And so I just want to encourage us tonight to walk with those who are wise, have, have wise counsel around us and, and just know that you are complete in the Lord. And so the Lord Jesus bless us tonight. I pray that you were blessed. God bless you. I'll praise God. I'll hand over to the moderator in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Bless you. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Thank you, Sister Samantha. Thank you for the beautiful presentation that you made tonight. For that uh, exciting long table talk. Um, that is very, 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 very typical. It's like a unique to, to especially to our young people being saved you know as a youngster also would have struggled with some of the issues that you mentioned the issue of low self-esteem the issue of peer pressure uh, what we go through as youngsters and how we can overcome I, 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 am, I am convinced that our youngsters today, uh, it is even more difficult for them maybe than it was for us in our days. In that um, There are so many things that they have to compete with. Just the idea of social media alone, that's a discussion all by itself. Tests and challenges from every angle, but um, we thank God tonight that uh, in your presentation, I'm sure that persons were made you know, much more aware as to how to deal with some of these challenges, how to overcome uh, the idea of, of the issue of peer pressure. It comes from, as we said earlier, uh, media, also touched on the family, and also from peers. As, as youngster, as you mentioned, so struggle from the idea of self-esteem 
and it leads to a whole uh, myriad of other issues that come forward when the idea of, 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 of you know, that of low self-esteem where we're not even confident in our very own skin. You know, how we were created. We think that we're too dark. We think that our nose are too big. We think we may be too short. Uh, we didn't come from a certain family. And so there are, you know, just so many things that, you know, trouble our minds as youngsters as we go on daily. And of course, for those who are in school, it is not made any easier because there are, you know, the pressure comes from all angles. You know, who, who, who am I? What family am I from? What do I do during the summer holidays? When you go back to school, who went abroad? Who spent summer here? Who spent summer there? And sometimes as, as Christians, we are tempted to say some things that don't really go so. I don't want to say we are tempted to lie. Because as Christians, we don't lie. Uh, uh, we are tempted to say things that don't really go that way. Uh, which is, you know, lying. You know, to say where we spent the summer when it really didn't go like that. But I want us to understand youngsters, as Sister Samantha puts it um, to us tonight with some beautiful example with that of Caleb and Joshua. She also made mention of um, was it David, uh, some very good examples from the scripture that she used. And as these youngsters, they stood up for what they believed and they were victorious. So you also can be victorious if you stand up for what you believe. Hold to your faith in God that nothing can move you. I remember as a youngster growing up and there was a bishop who spoke on the issue of uh, low self-esteem. It's amazing that over 30 years ago this was happening. Um, he said, listen, me, if there is any pressure that's supposed to happen, the pressure is supposed to be coming from you because you have the power and so you should be pressuring persons instead of being pressured. So um, I'm encouraging your youngsters to um, be confident in the God that you serve, that he has called you into his kingdom for such a time as this, that you have a mission here on earth, and that you have, just like the officers or others who are called and are, uh, you know, have an objective in reaching souls, that you too have that responsibility to reach someone for Christ in your space, whether it's in your home, in your community, in your school, and you're going to reach them by the life that you live. So as earlier, Sister Samantha mentioned uh, her challenge with the bag that she was carrying. Sister Laverne and I were laughing because we were remembering when we were in school that our mother used to get the crocus bag. And I don't know when the crocus bag don't. We used to get the crocus bag, put it out, or the flower bag, and just sew it into one little thing like a pillowcase. I know you know a pillowcase. And then put a drawstring through it, and then that was our bag. No brand, no John Sport, no whatever uh, Sister Manta mentioned again with the monkey on it. <laughs> None of those we had. And um, we, we had to be happy with it. And what was good is that everybody basically had the same thing. So um, we, didn't, we didn't feel too badly. As I said, I know it's kind of really pretty challenging for young people today because there's just so much that you have, have to um, compete with. But um, God has called into, kingdom for, into his kingdom for this very moment. And so it's not too difficult for you because he will equip you with the necessary instrument for the task that is ahead. So you don't have to run. You don't have to hide. You are able and you are going to make it. All right? So don't, uh, I know the pressure is on, but don't let it get you down. Uh, stand up. Stand up and uh, be counted for Jesus Christ. Thanks again, Sister Samantha. Beautiful uh, round table talk. Beautiful word of exhortation. The Lord bless your soul as you continue to prepare and make yourself available to minister to God's children. Lord bless you all, young people. And I want to, of course, greet 
our pastor, Elder Romano Willis, and his family to our associate pastor, Oliphant, to um, all the officers and the, the, the youth department, our national president, Sister Zara, Sister Shani, our, our, our local president, and their teams. We want to bless the Lord for you, and we greet you in the most exalted name of Jesus Christ. If there's any who is joining us tonight, any, any visitor, we want to thank you for coming on in our youth service. And we do trust that your souls were blessed as you join us tonight. And uh, we thank you for sharing those who have shared in the chat room, those who have, have opened their mics, their microphones, and you know, say something. The Lord bless you. And we thank you all for participating tonight. And we trust that your souls were richly blessed. We're going to be closing off. Hallelujah to God, and we're going to be praying for uh, those who are in need of healing tonight and those who are in need of covering and deliverance. And it was usual, it's youth service night, and so we want to invite the youngster to come on in and to pray with us. Um, Sister Daniel, is your, is there, are you available? I'm going to be asking you to come on in, Sister Daniel. And to pray for healing for Brother Aaron Roden, who is in the hospital, for Brother Fraser, uh, for Sister Charmaine Bennett, pain in the body, particular stomach, all right, and for other persons who are ill. Sister Daniel, just come on in, open your microphone, and pray for healing for the saints. This name, Daniel. So, there's a mirror phone. All right, Gio. So, if the mantle falls on your head, so come on in, Gio, and back your sister up. It's all right. Come on in, Gio. <laughs> all right, Gio. I hear you. All right. All right. Amen. So, what a youngster. Come on in and to pray tonight. I, I want the youngster to pray. Courtney Ann? Courtney Ann? Hello? Come on in, baby, and, and, and pray. Pray for healing for these persons. Pray for healing in Jesus' name. Okay. Very good. Heavenly Father, our healer, our friend, our Father. Lord Jesus, I pray that you wash me tonight, wash me clean, whiter than snow. You are our healer from the beginning to the end. Lord Jesus, you see the names on the prayer request, Lord Jesus. You know whatever is wrong with these people and why they are in the stage that they're in. And Lord Jesus, I pray that you heal them with your mighty power, Lord Jesus, and keep them safe. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. And so we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Wow. amen. 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 Oh, God Almighty, the perfect. Your word said, Lord, will heal the sick. And even if they have committed any sin, Lord, they'll be forgiven. And so we back up our faith tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for Sister Courtney. And we pray, Lord God, for covering and deliverance, oh God, for the Thompson and Dunkley families who mourn, oh God, death of their loved one at this time, oh God Almighty. You are the comforter, Lord Jesus, who can do it like you, oh God, like you walked onto the the, the, the graveside of, 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 of Lazarus, and you brought comfort to Mary and Martha. I pray you'll show up, Lord God, in the Thompson's home, in the Dunkley's home, Lord Jesus, and that they will be comforted. Thank you, Lord. Be comforted in knowing that your loved ones, oh God, had repented of their sins. Oh God Almighty, had been baptized in your name. Oh God, and for those who have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And oh God Almighty, we thank you for the beautiful hope that you have given to your children and so lord god we don't mourn oh god like those without hope 
But we thank you, Lord Jesus, as their hearts are comforted, even at this time. We pray, Lord God, for Cordy McNabb, for Natasha Tamasa, and Wendy Tamasa, and Wendy Palmer, in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for covering and deliverance, Lord. Every situation, you know, every condition, nothing is strange to you, Lord God. Nothing is impossible with you, for you're that kind of God. The scripture says you specialize in the things that seem impossible, but it's in the home, in the workplace, whatever space there may be, Lord, where the challenges are. I pray, Lord, even now that you will break every petal, that you will destroy every yoke, Lord Jesus, and you'll grant deliverance to your children, that your children, oh God, will rise and shine. Oh, God, and as they give you the glory, that their souls will be blessed. We want to thank you for tonight, Lord. We want to thank you for Sister Samantha. Oh, God, who presented tonight. We pray you to bless her soul. Thank you to strengthen her. Thank you to take her deeper in your word. Oh, God, as you equip her, Lord Jesus, for your kingdom. Thank you to bless our youth department, our president, and our team. Oh, God, all our young people. I pray, Lord God, for a fresh anointing upon their souls. I pray, Lord God, everyone, Lord God, will experience the glory of God. Hallelujah. We'll be filled and full of the spirit. Oh, God Almighty, anointed and equipped for this time that they will know, Lord God, that whatever space they are in, and Lord God, there you are placed them, oh God, to be an example, to be a light for others to see. Hallelujah to God as they'll illuminate their world through the power of Jesus Christ. Continue to bless this house, Lord. Bethel, uh, Portmore. Continue to bless our pastor. Oh God, all the officers. Continue to bless the team here at Portmore, Lord. Strengthen and keep us. Bind us together. We pray for those, oh God, may be struggling in one way or the other. Some of God Almighty are impacted by COVID-19. Some are impacted by the effects of COVID-19. Oh, God, I pray that your children will be healed, will be strengthened, will be revived, Lord, that as we go through these difficult times, as we walk, Lord, hold our hands, keep us still, oh, God Almighty, as we stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You are in it with us, Lord. And if you are in the vessel, we can smile at any storm. Thank you for hearing us tonight. Thank you for blessing this room. Uh, we look to you. We give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we say amen, amen and amen and amen. It's okay to unmute and say amen, brethren. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we give God the glory. So we have announcements tonight for those who are in need of counseling and prayer. You may call these numbers that appear on the screen as somebody just wants to talk with you and to share Jesus Christ with you. He's the solution for the crisis. Hallelujah to God. So feel free to call and we'll be happy to speak with you. Of course, our Sunday school classes begin this Sunday. There's a class for everyone starting at 8.15. So just look at your Zoom number and tune into your class and participate. There is a word awaiting you for the children, for the young adults, for the, for the older ones, for the older, older ones. All are invited to be a part of our Sunday school class. Amen. And of course, we meet again Sunday morning uh, at, at, at 10 as we will be coming to you live from broadcast house at our church. And so you can join us uh, on YouTube, enjoy the service. Uh, just worship the Lord with us. Pray for the preacher. Pray for the moderator. Pray for the, the praise team. Pray for the musician. Pray that the system will work well. Pray for the administrative team that all will work well as we give the wind a mighty voice. Hallelujah. And of course, all our main services are uploaded to our YouTube YouTube page, and it's Bethel United Church. Apostolic Portmore, you can like, subscribe, turn on and notifications. The Lord bless you tonight uh, as we continue to serve him in spirit and in truth. Thanks again for all those who have joined in. Thank you, administrators. The Lord bless you. You've been doing a fantastic job. You've been making all this possible. Amen. We come and we prepare to do our thing with you. You made it all possible. We want to thank you administrator, Sister Zara, 
and her team for the wonderful work that you have been doing. You have been called into the kingdom for such a time as this. And of course, uh, Sister Marcia, you want me to remind uh, those who care to join us that day for we do have for a meeting every Saturday morning at 5 a.m. Uh, tomorrow, the ladies, tomorrow is ladies Sunday. Yes, so tomorrow the ladies will be joining us. And so and you're the men too. That's fine. Of course, of course, of course. You're free to join us and um let's let's pray, let's storm the gates of hell, let's let's just storm the mercy seats um as we pray early morning. Amen. So you're free to join us. Are you looking your groups? It's whether it's the brothers group, the um the ladies group, the youth group, uh those who can't find anybody, just contact anybody from the choir and they will send you the link for for a meeting. All right. So, Sister Zara, have I missed anything? No, sir. All right, all right. God bless you again. And as we close out, join us again on Sunday in, in, um, in our morning service. I want to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne. The only wise God, our Savior, we ascribe our glory, honor, dominion, majesty, and power. Both now and forevermore, all God's people say, Amen. Amen.